As the parent of five children and 21 grandchildren, author Tim Bailey knows how difficult being a father can be. He returns to the show to offer hope to dads overcoming the failures of fatherhood. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Valerie. Okay, I, it's such a liberating message that you can be a dad or parent. You don't always have to get it right, but if you learn from those failures, you know, you will in the end be a great dad. What say you, I, do you know it from personal experience? When I had uh, a son uh, and he was reaching high school, he was getting to be a teenager, I felt completely, utterly inadequate mm -hmm. to be the father to a teenage son. I didn't know what to do. And I went to one of the elders in our church and I said, would you please pray for me? And he did pray for me. And all I knew to do at that time was what my dad had done with me, which was I just would hug him and kiss him before he went to bed, pray for him before he went to bed. But, I mean, that's pretty pathetic. You know, it's not a long list of to-dos and, and not to-dos. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I saw was that God used the prayers, my prayers, but the prayers of this elder and other people. And we, we ended up having a very, very sweet relationship. He's now in the ministry. Yesterday he was helping me write some things. Um, I think that we have to trust God. And so our failures don't just teach us, but they also make us dependent on God. And that's the solution to all of our weaknesses. There's no father who doesn't have weaknesses and mistakes. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to have all of the answers. No, do we? absolutely not. The fact is every child is going to bring you to the very edge. <laughs> Especially teenage girls. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, you weren't a teenage girl, but you were, no, a child that brought, you, you were a child that brought your own father to the yes. edge. And yes. you kind of touched on this story yesterday when we interviewed mm -hmm. you. But uh, expound a little bit about your father actually kicked you out of the house, right? Yes, I had. Uh, I, I wasn't a terrible presence in the home, but I wasn't honoring God. I was smoking dope. I was staying out late at night. Uh, I was working. And uh, my father did not like conflict. He was a gentleman. He doesn't like to inflict pain, Newman said. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of character, I remember the Saturday morning when in the front hallway I was going up, we had a split level house, I was going up to my room and my dad said, Tim, wait a second. So I turned around on the second stair to look at him and he just looked at me and very quietly he said, Tim, you're not honoring the Lord. You may not live in my home any longer. Wow. Wow. That was like a ton of bricks. And it was, it was amazing to me. Mm -hmm. I was not angry. I realized since my dad had lost three children to death prior to me, and now I was the oldest son, I realized that my dad was afraid of what I was doing with my life. And it was so obvious to me that it required an unbelievable faith on his part that he was making me choose between God and my sin and he was not going to try to mediate the tension between me and God. He was saying, you will not have me in my house if you will not have my heavenly father, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and I thought about that and uh, over the years it's become, I would say, the most precious moment of my life. But what did that teach you about God? I mean, because that's where the lesson comes from with our earthly parents. Well, it taught me that God disciplines those he loves, it says in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. And it taught me that, that, that well, take me being a, a father and a pastor, that often pastors will run their churches through women because women will put up with more from pastors mm -hmm. and they won't discipline the men. They won't preach to the men. They won't say no to the men. And what I've learned from my father is that the love that you get from a son you discipline is, is unbelievable. And I saw that with my own children, that often the greatest love I got was after I had disciplined them. And it was clear I was disciplining in love, not just that I was angry or irritated. Mm -hmm. And I see it in the church too. I see men, uh, they'll, if, if you admonish a man in the church, he'll either kill you or love you. There's nothing in between with a man. <laughs> you know, there are people out there, and, and there are especially guys who will say, well, I haven't succeeded, but they blame that on their father. Yes, they blame yeah, that yeah. on the way they were raised. Yeah. 
What do you say to those people about their accountability and, and taking responsibility for their own lives? I had a man a few years ago, he ended up leaving the church, but he was a man who was in his middle to late 50s, and he had spent his life being a victim. And I thought a lot about it, and I thought, you know, do you want to face God and say that you're not responsible because you got hurt, because your mother didn't love you, your father was absent, or whatever it is? I think the first thing to say to men about this is, it does not matter what you have suffered, you will stand before God and give an accounting for your life. Mm -hmm. You can't play the victim card with God, okay? He's not politically correct, <laughs> and he's not going to, uh, he pities the things that you've suffered, he pities you because he knows your flesh, but you have obligations and responsibilities, and this is a message that isn't said to, to fathers enough. It doesn't matter what our father was like, whether he was absent or present. It doesn't matter how much we have been wounded in life, how many unfair things we think have happened to us, and often they have happened. Um, God will, we will stand before the judgment seat of God and we will give an account for our stewardship of the children and of the home that he has given us. Now, that's, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, and this is kind of funny, but, you know, it's pathetic it's mm -hmm. pathetic to go through your life as a man complaining and whining. Mm -hmm. And so buck up, yes, my brothers died. You were harmed by a, a father who was browbeating and intimidating you all the time. Live by faith. Live by faith. You think about the Old Testament, the patriarchs in the Old Testament, they all failed. They all had their children watch them fail. How about the other children of David? after he committed adultery and murdered the husband. Mm -hmm. And so we have to live by faith. The world is sinful. Okay, so for the man who's watching, who's saying, I don't even know where to begin. You know, I, I want to do right, I want to try. Um, how can I even jumpstart this process? Is it through fair, uh, prayer on their knees? Or how do they yeah, even you get it together? Yes, when we see how inadequate we are and how much we fail, we do have to plead with God, plead with God. And he promises that if we ask for the Holy Spirit, they will give them to us. Mm -hmm. And this is not just something I say, this is true. I just testified about what prayer did for me as a dad. The second thing is don't buy any books that have 10 steps. <laughs> you okay. just, it, 10 steps, this is like not an engineering enterprise, mm -hmm. fatherhood. You have to be emotionally intelligent. You have to use your wife. You have to ask your wife where your weaknesses are without fearing her when you go a different way. Um, but learn about God the Father. Uh, there's so much in scripture about God's fatherhood. Read the Gospel of John and see the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. And then try to tell the truth about God's fatherhood. That's the first thing I would say. And you'll fail because God's perfect, you're not. Mm -hmm. But I think these, prayer, ask your wife where she sees your needs, and then try to copy God and tell the truth about God's fatherhood. What can wives do? You, you say, consult your wife. What can wives do to help their husbands be better fathers? And, and for that matter, you know, a lot of people watching the show might be older children. Mm -hmm. What can they do to help? Well, first of all... Um, Wives need to uh, remember that God made Eve for Adam and second. Now, this does not mean that the wife should be a wallflower. A lot of the problems that I see in church families are because a husband does not ask his wife's counsel mm -hmm. and does not use the gifts she has that he doesn't have, all right? Marriage is complimentary. It takes both of us, all right? Um, but so the wife needs to respect her husband and submit to him, but also fight him. Now, I know that it sounds antithetical to say submit and fight, but they're not. Uh, the fact is a wife does have to, at times, it would be best if it were private, uh, tell, take her husband to task and say, no, that was wrong. But the other thing is she can help her husband by praying for him. She can also help her husband sometimes by uh, being emotionally intimate. I tell women a lot, you know, I know he's a man, 
touch him. You know, women like to say sex begins in the kitchen. In other words, talk to me, right? Mm -hmm. Men need to be touched. A lot of times a man will be uh, much more vulnerable and sensitive if a woman will just bridge the gap by touching him. And don't be afraid to cry. Uh, tears are something that work wonders with men. Wow, thank you so much for your insight, Tim. To connect with Tim, go to daddytriedbook.com. If you can't remember that, just go to harvest-tv.com for a link to his new project. It's called Daddy Tried. Coming up later, Pastor Charles with your prayer request. But up next, Brian Bush with Holy Land Moments. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 